Welcome everyone. I'm Laura DeFranco, the CEO of Brave Healer Productions, where we have a mission to change the world one brave word at a time. And here today to help me with that mission is Carol Park, one of the authors of a new book we have coming out, The Ultimate Guide to Self-Healing, Volume 5. Wow, you know, there's a story behind this crazy uh, series of books that has been um, just amazing over the last year and a half. And back in March of 2020 is when I woke up dreaming the idea that we needed to get the healers together to give you all self-healing tools that you could practice at home. You know, in a, in a night almost, we lost being able to go out to our healers and coaches and practitioners and especially get our hands on kinds of healing. And so I'm so excited that this is a series of books and really I call them toolkits, you guys, because people like Carol here have given you practical things that you can um, do from the pages of the book. So I can't wait to hear more about Carol's chapter. Welcome, Carol. How are you doing? Hi, Laura. I'm doing very well. Thank you. It's good to see you. You too. Y'all, Carol is a professional healer and teacher of Tai Chi, Qigong, yoga, and meditation. And as always, I'm going to hook you up with the websites down below so that you can explore after the show. Um, but Carol, tell us about this amazing chapter that you wrote. Well, my chapter is chapter six, Beyond the Story, Going Deep into the Iceberg. And basically that is it. It, it. It's going beyond the story because to me, stories are just stories. There's always far, far more going on underneath. It really is the tip of the iceberg, just the story. And we all have many, many stories. We make stories up all the time, but we have to go deep into the energy beneath the story in order to heal anything. So my book is one example of that happening to me, really. How I went into the iceberg below the story. I love that title too, because it is like that. And I always say to people, my authors, I say, well, let's try not to scare the people here because, you know, there's a certain um, way that we think about what going deep means. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, we all have karma. We all have programs inside us. And they are energies, really. They're just energies, very, very tightly packed. Most of us push down very, very hard, but they're there. And they might be from childhood. They could be from our programming at school, friends, family, but some of them are very old from past lifetimes that we've carried and carried and carried, but they're there, they're active in us and they start to come out and they come out in all sorts of strange ways that where we react to things in the world, we project to things in the world, we project it out all the time and we make a story up about it. Our whole life is just a series of stories and healing very much is not about talking about your story in your mind, but going into what is beneath this story. What is the energy that needs to be lifted out? acknowledged, accepted, and then you need higher help to do that. You can't just play around with it in your mind because the mind cannot heal the mind. You have to transform the energy, transcend the energy. And that's really what healing is. So that is going beyond the story into what's really happening. Okay, I'm gonna repeat what you just said. You have to transform and transcend the energy to have a deeper, more effective, more thorough and longer lasting kind of healing. Mm -hmm. You have to transform right. the energy. So, so of course there are ways I can transform my own energy. You're suggesting that I get help and I'm going to play with Carol today, y'all, because I, <laughs> I know about this topic and I understand why getting help is really important, but I also understand that there's ways I can shift my own energy. What's the difference, Carol? The difference is that things tend to be very hidden. And when we're healing, there are layers that peel away. It's like an onion. 
the layers peeling away for the onion and getting deep and deep and deep into the core issue. And it's usually something that you don't realize you're carrying. You think it's something that's happening in your life. You think it's the story or the people around you, but it's something much older and usually very, very painful. And our bodies hide the pain. If you look at around at the people around you, we've all got different body shapes, different types, even identical twins are not exactly the same. Our bodies are slightly different. That's their different patterns, their different karma, their different programs manifesting. And the physical body is the final manifestation of the energies that you're holding. And you're, if you become sick and ill, that is the final, final calling. I have to deal with this, this deep pain that usually is not conscious. So what is conscious when someone comes to a healing session, their story that they're telling me, I listen deep beyond that story. I listen between their sentences, between their words. I connect with their soul. Their soul speaks to me. What is really going on? And slowly, step by step, we peel away the energies, the layers of energy, and get into the core. Now, that can take quite a few sessions. If it's very old, very deep, very, very painful, because not everyone wants to look into the iceberg. The idea of healing is quite nice. Oh, I'm going to heal. Lovely. And it is lovely after you've done it. But actually going through the healing process can be very uncomfortable. And most of us that do healing work or have been in a healing scenario of some kind, we know that. Now, where the energy work, the yoga, the qigong, the tai chi comes in, is that it strengthens you. It starts to release the trapped energies along your body. So people start, start doing yoga or start doing some qigong work. They start aching in places they didn't know they could ache. That's because the energy is moving, because it's being trapped there. And the more you do it, the more you release, but the more then you have to heal it. And then when you get to the point where you've already released some, you have to keep up the momentum, keep practicing so that things don't get trapped anymore so you continue to go in deeper and deeper and deeper into the core issues but you're not creating any more programming you're not creating any more karma you're not accepting any more karma your vibration gets higher so your whole body starts to change because it's really in a higher vibration you start to connect with the chi or the prana energy of nature of the solar system you start to connect with the energy of the sun that we call the radiant energy it gives you a lot of protection and makes you much more powerful and stronger. And all these help your healing journey. They help your body to be strong. They help you to have strong energy. And then you can connect higher, like some people connect with their soul, start to connect in with angels or the higher beings. And they come in to help you. When you're releasing that dark stuff, they help you to process it. They take it away and transform it for you. But most people, need someone like myself or someone like you, Laura, as a go-between, as a bridge, because most people can't do that yet. They're not ready to do that on their own. They need help. So we have to join to help each other. Oh my, there's so many different um, ways I could go in this amazing conversation. Um, it's like I want to slow it down and pause on so many different points that you made. One is yeah the healing crisis. And Carol described this just now, and um, we've used this term in my healer circles, the healing crisis. You know, healing sounds really great, but crisis doesn't sound really great. And the reason that we're pairing those two is because of what Carol said in terms of, you know, this isn't always pretty. Um, it can mm -hmm. feel very, very nice on the other end of the journey and in many different moments in between. But while you're in that deep, dark place, working on transforming that energy, it can feel quite like, like quite awful. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to, what else do you want to say about that? That's again, where the energy work comes in. Um, and in the chapter, chapter six in your book, um, the tool that I put in there is some simple Qigong energy work. 
I write about a tool called Butterfly Sweeping. And it's Butterfly Sleeping Level 1, because I thought if I put more, it would just be too much. Well, you, you're sweeping your energy body, your chi or your prana body. It's very simple, very easy to do. And I can do it now. It's basically just this. Just lifting and sweeping your body. <laughs> and also what we call heaven and earth rainbow bridge, where you draw a, a pillar of light from the earth up through and sweep around. Nice. So that gives you strength. It sweeps your aura and protects you in a circle of light. So you can do it even sitting in front of your computer. You can do that. There's no excuse. You can do that. You definitely so can when you do go, that. I like that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So when you go through your healing process, I always give my clients a little bit of homework, even if it's something simple like that, that they can even do sitting in front of their computer or in front of the TV to help clear your energy field to help you to feel stronger, to connect with nature, something very simple. And it depends who it is. It depends what they need. But that's where that energy work comes in, to help yourself while you're going through the healing process, working with a healer or a therapist, whoever you're working with. You need that extra self-help and self-care. So Carol does mentioned, <laughs> yes, it does. It's amazing. And this was the other kind of direction I wanted to go with you because you are very pro therapeutic movements and you are a specialist in, in all of those different kinds of therapeutic movements. And I too love the movement aspect. Of course, connecting with nature can be very still. And then over here, we have these beautiful movements we can also do. There's lots of ways, but I kind of want you to talk about more more about the movements now. So we're clearing, we're shifting, we're moving things. We don't want that energy that starts to shift to kind of bog down and get stuck again, right? Is that the general idea of it? That's, that's correct, yes. You have to keep things moving because energy is like water. If you, if you just sit, it stagnates like water would stagnate. And is that old word disease? This ease is really what it is. It's because you're becoming stagnant. When you have sickness in your body, tightness, aches and pains, it's because the energy, the chi, the prana has got trapped there. So you need to do some movement to keep that flowing. And again, this comes from your programming, your karma. It starts to show in your body. Like even people that are very athletic and sporty, or dancers that move a lot sometimes still get this trapped energy because they're working more in the physical movement level. Energy movement is different. Energy movement can be just very, very slow, very, very focused, that we do specific movements that open the chakra system, open the energy meridians, lift the consciousness, lift the mind, so things start to move in a certain way. And because we're working in higher vibration, that energy doesn't get trapped around us either. It starts to transform naturally because everything is moving in that slightly higher vibration. So that's the main issue. Keep things moving, but work with this focus. We have sequences that are much more still standing like a tree, where you literally just stand for ages. You could stand for an hour just holding a tree, but you're rooted into the earth, drawing the earth power and tuning into that earth energy. And that brings the energy up through your legs, up through your spine, into your brain. It moves around your body, lifting and transforming and moving. Now, when you first start moving and exercising and holding this kind of qigong, you can start to ache. It's like, oh, I've never felt this kind of ache before because it's showing you where you're holding the tension in your body, where the energy is trapped. And that's quite different to physical energy. So we have to understand that we're moving through the levels of physical energy and what we call the jung and the chi, the, the flowing prana energy is different. It's high, slightly higher vibration. And then beyond that, we start to move into what we call the, the emotional energy or astral energy, that's a different level again. Our emotions, our dreams at night, the psychic level again is something else that all gets trapped in the body. 
and it has to be addressed at different stages. So you don't go into a healing session usually and go straight into the deeper levels. It's what you're ready for. So it can only happen at the level you're ready for it to happen at. You can only release in the level you're ready to release it in. Otherwise, you may become very, very fearful. It's too much energy at once. So we do it very slowly, step by step by step. But the movement's very important. As a, as a healer, I have to move all the time to keep my energy clear, to keep my body strong. My physical body holds the chi. The chi holds the light. The light holds the love when we're connecting with really high energy. So always thinking about levels of energy and movement of it. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for taking us through that. There's movement, but there's energy movement, y'all. And then in energy movement, there are all the levels like, yes, thank you, Carol. That was awesome. Um, I want our listeners to really understand what's possible. And you are so helping us with this. So I remember a moment when I experienced a session from someone who practices a modality called biodynamic craniosacral therapy. And this is a local woman, but this was during COVID. So of course we had a phone session. Okay. So she assured me, she said, this is going to be the same as when we're in person. Um, and that day I realized what was possible in terms of energy medicine and healing. We all, we've all had so many aha moments on this journey, right? This healing path. And that was one of them for me when I laid in my office on a mat with my little, I had my phone and my earbuds and she just told me to lay there and relax. And she did her work. And I, all my job was, was to feel and allow myself to feel what was going on. And um, it was quite amazing. I could, I could tell that story for a lot longer, but I kind of was curious if you'd share one of those moments for you when you realized what was possible, maybe a little earlier on in your journey. I, one particular moment isn't coming to mind. Um, it's been so long. <laughs> it's been such a long journey. <laughs> um, but it's, it's very much, it starts with feeling uncomfortable about something. You can just start feeling, for some people, depression, even suicidal. Things are just horrible around us. And really, it's coming from us. Something in us is rising to be looked at. But then our mind misunderstands. Oh, that person's said that, and they're doing that to me. That person said that, they're doing that to me. But really, it's not them. They're doing their thing. It's the way we react to what they're doing that is what we have to look at. That's the issue that needs to be addressed, our reaction to people. And when we talk about people mirroring us, it's our reaction to them that is actually the mirror. So that's what we have to look at, the feeling, our reaction to things. It might not be a person. It might be something we hear on the news. It could be just a, a fleeting thing that happens that triggers that in us. And it can be very, very dark. And so that's when you start to do your energy work and you start to seek help. And for me, it has been very much about working through things with parents, because for most of us, our parents are our guardians are the first step. Our mother's usually the first person we bond with. Um, and some people, obviously, it's different. But the first people that we bonded with as a child and the way they programmed this and our reaction to that is usually, for most of us, the thing to deal with. Um, in my book, chapter here, chapter six, going beyond the story. I do write about it, something that happened when I was 13 years old. It happened in the classroom at school. Very painful for a 13 year old. But when you look back at it now, it's so silly. But at that time, it was everything. So again, I'll, we blow things out of proportion, but we have to look at the emotion, the feeling. We have to get out of our head. So for me, come out of my head, come down into my breath, 
came down into the emotion and the feeling. Now, for a lot of people, that's not easy because we live in our heads in the 21st century. To come out of the head, come into the breath, come into the body, into the feeling and let that rise. Now, that's when it gets a bit scary looking at the feelings. But we let that feeling rise and go into it as much as we can, release it as much as we can. And then we have to want to be free of it. You have to want to let it go. And that, that nasty word, the ego, loves to hold on. It doesn't want you to be free. It holds on. So you have to really want to be free of it and transcend it. So you have to literally give it up, give it up to the light. So constantly as a healer and a healing practitioner, I'm giving anything that might come negatively in, up to the light. But also, as I just mentioned, keep practicing, practicing, practicing. So negativity can't come to me. My energy field is very strong. So it's, it's not easy for negativity from the world or from someone else to get to me because I have a shield of powerful energy around me. Which is so a beautiful idea for, journey. yes, for our listeners to um, think about that is possible. It's possible to get to that point where you're not allowing that negative energy to um, affect you. Uh, especially in a, you know, in a negative way. I mean, we're going to be bombarded with things because life is life. But if you have your shield and you've done the inner work, the inner energy. So I'm going to just read something from the um, beginning of the interview for our listeners. Carol described this tightly packed, old, painful energy that we've carried for sometimes decades and when it starts to come out, it can come out and we can notice it in our triggery reactions, the way that we make up stories about things. And so it's just really great because that's the place with the awareness, then you get this choice and anything becomes possible for your healing. So Carol, thank you so much for what you do in the world and for being here today to share it with everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Thank you so much. So if something Carol said resonated with you today, just scroll on down a little more and you're going to find her website and click on that website and explore and see what she's up to because she's up to a lot of awesomeness in the world, y'all. And I know you have this chapter in The Ultimate Guide to Self-Healing, but you're also working on your solo book and you have um, offerings for people. And so you guys need to explore a little bit and see what Carol is doing in the world. It's pretty amazing. And uh, remember that we are going to be doing a live stream book launch party on December 17th, 10 a.m. Eastern. So I'm gonna gather with all of the Ultimate Guide to Self-Healing authors, and we'll be doing some fun giveaways that day. You'll find us on the Brave Healer Productions Facebook page. I have you hooked up down there too for that link. And of course, if you're listening after December 17th, well then you can hop over to Amazon and grab your copy of this amazing book, including Carol's chapter. And maybe you are a wellness practitioner who's ready to share brave words in one of our upcoming best-selling books. You guys find us at bravehealer.com. I will be so excited to talk to you. And lastly today, everybody remember, your words change the world when you're brave enough to share them. So it's time to be brave. See you next time, everyone. Thank you, Carol.